Chim chimini, chim chimini, chim chim chiru. Something is brewing and about to begin. Ah, childhood, always slipping away like sand through a sieve. But we've got just the thing to revisit those simpler times. A quick soar through the clouds of our youth with Mary Poppins herself. And what better way to feel connected to this 1964 classic than by catching up with the cast today? I'm your magical nanny, Nostalgic Nick, and I won't be complicating things that are really quite simple, because this charming film really represented simpler times for all of us, and it had the perfect team to do so. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe so you'll always catch our next Nostalgic Rewind. Now, if all your chores are done, grab your umbrella and let's float on over and catch up with the cast of Mary Poppins. Julie Andrews. Mary Poppins sure set the bar sky high for nannies. And it was Julie Andrews who helped the Banks family and us believe in magic once again. Andrews, with her impeccable voice and a spoonful of something special, really made this film an all-time great. Her teachers raved about her rare gift known as perfect or absolute pitch. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. After dominating West End and Broadway, Andrews entered the film industry with some magic. As the titular Cinderella in 1957, and by the mid-60s, she became Mary Poppins and then Maria in The Sound of Music. We also have a great throwback to revisit the Von Trapp family for you to watch next. Andrews married filmmaker Blake Edwards in 1969 and the pair worked together frequently, including the terrific 1982 musical comedy Victor Victoria, which was nominated for seven Academy Awards, and then once again for her short-lived sitcom Julie, directed by Edwards. Julie Andrews' singing was as powerful as it gets. Heartbreakingly, she had to undergo multiple surgeries to remove throat nodules, which had dire effects on her untouchable soprano voice. She'd never sing with such power again, but still she persisted, once again mastering a regal presence as Queen Clarice in the Princess Diaries films, and lending her still beautiful voice to the prim Queen Lillian in Shrek. And today, Dame Julie is 85 years old, and most recently shines as the gossip columnist and narrator for Netflix's series Bridgerton. Check it out, she is once again magical. David Tomlinson. Meet George Banks. He works at, yep, the bank. He's a stern, no-nonsense kind of man. Thank you, most interesting. I think we've had quite enough of this nonsense. But you still really feel for him after he's discharged with an undeserving fist through his hat. But he finally remembers Poppin's wise words, or really word, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And after a few supercalifragilisticexpialidociouses, he feels much better. Tomlinson brought some skill to this role, with a wonderful voice and the best confused expression possible. Mary Poppins helped David become an official Disney star, continuing that partnership in films like The Love Bug in 1968 and Bed Knobs and Broomsticks in 1971. But in his private life, David dealt with a lot. He first married in September of 1943 to a widow with two children. But just months later in December, his new wife grabbed her sons and leapt from a New York hotel to their death. The boys were six and eight, and David never found it in him to visit their grave. He would marry once again a decade later to actress Audrey Freeman, and the couple remained together for 47 years until his death. The pair had four sons, but the third named Willie was autistic, which compelled Tomlinson to fight against the indifference towards the condition. After a life of extreme ups and downs, David passed away peacefully in his sleep in 2000 at the age of 83. Glynis Johns It's hard to beat Mary Poppins' endless energy, but Mrs. Winifred Banks definitely comes close. She could jump from one topic to another and have that same zeal for life every second. Well done, Banks! 
Johns didn't have to try hard to embody Mrs. Banks, as the role let her bring her own two defining traits, her cheery disposition and her husky voice. Excuse me, dear. Post everyone, please! Dancing was no problem either, since Glynis was actually a ballerina and instructor. Johns began acting in British films in 1938, and her big break was last minute replacing Elizabeth Bergner in 49th Parallel in 1941. She was nominated for the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her work in the 1960 film The Sundowners, but she can still be seen in some of our favorites, like a season one episode of Cheers, as Diane Chambers' wacky mother. In 1995, Johns acted alongside Sandra Bullock in While You Were Sleeping, one of her final roles before retiring. Today, she is 97 years old, and upon the death of Olivia de Havilland in 2020, Johns became the oldest living Academy Award nominee in an acting category. Keep it up, Mrs. Banks. Dick Van Dyke. Who could forget that fun-loving jack-of-all-trades? Or his cockney accent? Thank you, one and all, for your kind support. Even a spot of sunlight like Mary Poppins needs a friend. And Bert was just the guy to liven up anybody's day. The constable is responsible. Now how does that sound? No one could have possessed the physicality or charm of Dick Van Dyke. The man went from entertaining troops to a Broadway powerhouse. Thanks to Bye Bye Birdie, he'd follow Bye Bye onto the big screen and say hello to the world of Hollywood. He became the quirky Caractacus Potts in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And definitely check out our Chitty Chitty Epi Epi for more. Even how Julie Andrews was nearly truly scrumptious. And from his many iterations of the incredible Dick Van Dyke show, to working alongside his son Barry in Diagnosis murder. He's never stopped. And along the way, he found love with actress Arlene Silver, the two marrying in 2012, a union that turned more than a few heads due to their 46-year age gap. But we're glad he found time to make a cameo in Mary Poppins Returns. Karen Dotrice well-mannered, wide-eyed, and practical, Jane Banks shouldered a lot for such a little girl. Father in a cage? Karen Dotrice grew up surrounded by Hollywood royalty. In fact, while her father was in England and the rest of the family in the States, they got help from none other than Walt Disney, who then personally cast her as little Jane. Just three years after Poppins, she and co-star Matthew Garber played siblings again in the Gnome Mobile. But it didn't go smoothly, so Karen stopped acting for years and lost contact with Garber. She got back into the game in the mid-70s, part of the short-lived series Upstairs, Downstairs. It's something I'll never forget. But by 82, she once again quit after her part in the crime drama The 39 Steps. Instead, focusing on motherhood, she has three children from two marriages. Today, she is 65 years old and still a Disney fan who gets teary-eyed whenever she watches Mary Poppins. But she did hold it together long enough for a camp in the 2018 sequel. Matthew Garber. Michael Banks may have been the younger brother, but he was brave enough to protect his sister from all the scary people prowling London. Or so the kids thought. At least their nanny didn't have warts. No warts. That's the part I put in. Like his fellow co-star, Matthew also got his start on The Three Lives of Thomasina. Disney casting loved his body language and toolbox of stuff like nose scrunches, squinting, and hair brushing. You know, the deep stuff. The two friends were opposites. Karen, a proper Victorian lady, while Matthew, an adventuring rascal. Sadly, they lost contact after the no mobile, and Matthew would never act again. He planned on making a comeback. But before he could, he contracted hepatitis. Garber didn't even know until it was too late and it spread to his pancreas. And at just 21 years old, Matthew Garber died in London in 1977. He was posthumously named a Disney legend in 2004, and his little brother Fergus accepted on his behalf. Rest easy, Matthew. After years of work to try to get Mary Poppins turned into a film, we are all so lucky Walt Disney finally succeeded. And this cast was perfect in every aspect. 
So let's honor this timeless classic with some discussion. What is your personal favorite musical number from Mary Poppins? For me, it's Let's Go Fly a Kite. It's such a great tune. Have any of you read P.L. Travers' original books? And what are your thoughts on the 2018 Emily Blunt rendition? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We read everyone. And if you enjoyed this video, don't let sentiment muddle your thinking and click that thumbs up for us. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching and don't stay away too long.